right hi guys so let's start the next episode of 5 mcqs in 5 minute and as i have told you previously that we are actually discussing five important topics through this uh, series that we have started this series is equally important for fmg neat pg and our inict aspirant because question can change the language can change but uh, overall the topic remains the same the very first question that i am having today is about a female who is on lithium therapy she developed symptoms of lithium overdose which of the following statement is false about the lithium overdose what is false about lithium overdose hemodialysis is not useful in this patient lithium causes hypothyroidism lithium toxicity is increased in by thiazide diuretics and it is teratogenic we all know yes lithium is actually teratogenic it is actually associated with a condition known as your abstin anomaly abstin anomaly in which we are actually going to get uh, ch on chest x ray we will be getting box shape heart which i always ask the student to remember that tin se banta hai box tin will be giving rise to box right apart from that what else that we know about lithium ka side effect that lithium side effect is remembered by the mnemonic l i t t h lith and lith is stand for your leukocytosis that is going to be your leukocytosis insipidus that means your diabetes insipidus it will also be causing your tremor it will also be causing tremor it's a highly teratogenic agent it's highly teratogenic agent that means it is causing abstinence anomaly and it can even be associated with the hypothyroidism hypothyroidism right so again all of the following i mean affect is all the following other option that we have is actually uh, you know correct the only one which is wrong is for the management of the lithium we are actually needing or we are going to do hemodialysis hemodialysis is something that is going to be required hemodialysis will be required so hemodialysis is not useful no this is the most useful ha huh, na lithium is a drug that is having narrow therapeutic index and uh, you know the therapeutic index of lithium that we know is going to be between 0.6 to 1.5 milliequivalent per liter 0.6 to 1.5 milliequivalent per liter let's see the next question which of the following statement is correct about the mechanism of action of dicumarol in simple word dicumarol ka dusra naam hota hai that is warfarin to examiner is actually asking which of the following is correct about the mechanism of action of warfarin so what we know about warfarin it is one of the vitamin k dependent clotting factor and it targets the vitamin k or inhibits the vitamin k dependent clotting factor hai na so among the given choices if you are going to see act by inhibiting vitamin k epoxide reductase which is involved in the activation of clotting factor 2719 so again vitamin k dependent clotting factor will be targeted here option a is telling it inhibits the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin guys plasminogen to plasmin that will be tissue plasminogen activator a very good drug that we know is streptokinase others that we know is you know urokinase retiplase anistriplase tenactiplase all of them it is, does not have any calcium chelating property option d it act by increasing the antithrombin 3 activity antithrombin 3 activity is only and only increased by your heparin remember na heparin or low molecular weight heparin will be increasing the antithrombin 3 activity that goes and bind with factor 2 and factor 10 okay B is the correct answer here. Mycosis. Mucormycosis, the fungal infection mainly seen in the immunocompromised patient. Among the given choices, neutropenia, prolonged steroid, and uncontrolled diabetes, they all will be contributing or adding onto the, you know, uh, immune immune system or immunocompromisation. But chronic antibiotic usage, they can actually be associated with the conditions like let's say, you know, uh, antibiotic resistance that can be one of the problem. right it can also be associated with the pseudo membranous colitis but they will not be chronic antibiotic usage will not be adding on to the development of the mucormycosis another question examiner asks is for the management we already know that is going to be liposomal amphotericin b next that we are having in a patient with a benign prostatic hyperplasia which of the following agent is used to control the uh, irritative urethral symptom so irritative symptom patient is not able to evacuate the bladder completely in that case scenario we always on always utilize alpha blocker drugs like your prazosine prazosine is going to be preferred if there is a benign prostatic hypertrophy with the hypertension however if there is only a case of a benign prostatic hypertrophy we will be using agent like your tamsulosine tamsulosine silodosine they are the alpha 1a blocker they do not cause tamsulosine ka at sath advantage yahi hai that actually they do not cause postural hypotension sudden fall in bp will not be caused by them unlike prazosine that definitely prazosine will be causing sudden fall in the blood pressure bps plus hypertension mein prazosine will be the drug of choice if there is only patient who is coming to you with a benign prostatic hypertrophy tamsulosine will be the drug of choice last question that we have is about a hiv patient presented with a neck rigidity and seizure csf examination confirms the diagnosis of a cryptococcal meningitis so for the cryptococcal meningitis that is one of the serious fungal infection in fact for any other serious fungal infection the drug of choice that we know is none other than your liposomal amphotericin b if you are going to rule out other option what i would say that remember voriconazole is a drug which is considered as a drug of choice in a patient with the aspergillosis worry not i am here 
aspergillosis is worry not i am here aspergillosis fluconazole which is considered as the drug of choice for candidiasis it is the drug of choice for candidiasis and also the drug of choice of prophylaxis of again cryptococcal meningitis now there are two question that is squeezed down from here one is drug of choice for the active management of the cryptococcal meningitis we can utilize our liposomal lymphotericin b along with that we will also be adding your five flu cytosine that is understood right along with this one along with lymphotericin b we will be adding five flu cytosine but single best drug of choice is liposomal lymphotericin b five flu cytosine plus fluconazole again five flu cytosine can be utilized but they are not the drug of choice okay but among the given choices the preferred one is going to be liposomal lymphotericin b liposomal Tercin B is also considered the drug of choice in a patient with the Kala Azar. Fluconazole is a drug of choice mainly in a patient with the Candidiasis and also for the prophylaxis of cryptococcal meningitis. Right. So this was five minutes, five MCQ, and I will see you in the next episode. Please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you.